uh, the guy that's going to be bouncing the whole time. Those feet get a beating. Zero, that's zero, James two. Ignatowicz, the youngster. Jack Monroe will return. Let's play pickleball. Point. And that is Julian Arnold with the final dink that catches the net. And we're off and running here with men's quarterfinal zero, doubles action. Out. Wow. Yeah. James, Bad intentions. Yeah, James Ignatowicz hits the ball very hard and maybe a Zero, bit one, too one. big on that particular <laughs> swing. <laughs> so here's what we talked about. You'll see a right-handed serve and then the paddle switches and there's the left-handed drive. Thank you Second very much, serve. Jack, to introduce that talent that you have. Yeah, and Julian Arnold, very good offensive player, but two Zero, one, loose two. errors early from the middle of the court with his forehand. Yeah, a lot of variance in his game, but when it's good, it's very, very good as we kind of see his game in a nutshell early on. Absolutely. It is a roller coaster ride, but if it can stay at the top of the mountain, he can be and look like the best player in the world. Side out. The youngster went for that one. I was expecting that to be a soft reset and to all four players to start dinking, but he went for one, a two-handed, I guess, backhand yes. up the middle. Yes. <laughs> I mean, some great hands off of very awkward situations that started with the ball that clipped off the tape. One, one, two. There's a good look at James Ignatowicz, who played his college tennis at Vanderbilt. And you don't see a serve missed wide very often in pickleball, but we did there. I'd say 10 percent. Yeah. The other 90 two, one, two. either long or in the tape of, or in the net, of course. And that is the combination that makes Point. James Ignatowicz so lethal because the two ended backhand is awesome off the bounce. And it doesn't matter how far out wide he is. He will be Three, back one, to the middle for his forehand. Definitely left right that uh, mid-court shot high, and Julian took advantage. And I would expect Matt and uh, James to put a lot of balls soft back behind one, three, one. Julian Arnold to his backhand side, as his forehand is so lethal. Oh, that's great Come hands on. from the youngsters, and I want to monitor where they return as well. I think the drive of Julian and the crash Two, ability three, of the ambidextrous uh, Jack Monroe is a tough combination to handle. And there's the Point. challenge of Matt Wright, the elder statesman and former Michigan Wolverine having to charge three, across three, the court on a good deep serve, misses the return. Look at that dig. Oh. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> In that situation, <laughs> two out of three is world class because those were absolutely hammered. And uh, yeah, no. <laughs> let's put that ball out of its misery. I mean, that thing was destroyed. <laughs> so Howard Hepworth is our head referee here. We appreciate the work of all the referees. And you'll see the players spin it just to see if you got one that's Good and round and ready to go. That's the Vulcan V Pro Flight. So after just blunt force trauma on that last one. Uh, so 3-3 three, three here in game one. Again, this is quarterfinal Friday. 3-3-2. Three, three, right, and Ignatowicz have been 50-50 so far, which is surprising in their career. Yeah, definitely Side surprising. Out. Great move by Jack Monroe, just put it long. And I'll tell you right now, all four players not three, super three, one, interested in dinking early. No. Point. That's a great roll drop from James Ignatowicz and Matt Wright squeezing the middle from the Four, right three, side. Yes. James finishes that one off with his patented seat 
Yes, uh, and Monroe hit that return and ran as fast as he could forward and still didn't get to the kitchen no. line. Five, three, one. Now, this is a big serve. You can absolutely get your team ahead with a great serve. Very nice first volley from Monroe, getting it with power and down. We like when both of those happen. Five, three, two. And uh, Matt Wright lets everyone know that that's out. Yeah. I think he was talking to the other team. Yeah, and he has a young competitor on the other side, and he always ramps up the mental warfare when he has a newbie across the net. Wow, you heard the paddle Side flank out. that's usually bad for that team, but it stayed relatively safe. I mean, Jack Monroe was there. I mean, that was clearly on, Three, on six, Julian's one. side, but the lefty forehand was squeezing the middle. Oh, nope. Second serve. But you can see how aggressive the court positioning of Jack Monroe is after the Julian Arnold drive. He is trying Three, to six, put maximum two. pressure. Wow, paddle switch in the middle of this rally. And then James Ignatowicz pulls the trigger right down the middle. No one's playing center field. You will not see a swing like that from Julian Arnold very often. That was incredibly well disguised from James Ignatowicz. 6-3-1. He's just leaning in and sitting on anything that gets to him. I, I thought for sure he's just going to roll that ball back cross court to that spot that I talked about going, and he just puts it right in the midsection of Julian. Great Second, three, offense one. from James Ignatowicz. Yes. Oh, and a little Point. off speed. Nothing clean there, but who cares what it looks like. 8-3 for the three seed. 8-3-1. Arnold is down, but not out. And then <laughs> tags Matt Wright. Unbelievable from Julian Arnold. He had to avoid the kitchen, lost his footing, and then hits his opponent with a backhand roll. And the other part of this is these two have had a little uh, back and forth chirping in Eight, prior three, matches. We'll see if that ignites that. Oh my, the Point. trickery from the youngster there. Well, he fooled me, he just didn't fool James. That's the problem. <laughs> He's smiling about it. Nine, three, uh, and that's two. what's great about pickleball. People are inventing new shots on courts throughout this country. Yeah! And Game guess point. what? The, the challenge is you've poked the bear and now Matt Wright is screaming right back at Julian and it is game Ten, point three, quickly for Wright and Ignatowicz. And Point that'll game. do it. 11-3, very fast, <laughs> and lots going on at the paddle tap right there. Uh, but Matt Wright was picking on the size of Julian Arnold. Okay, so it is on. Yeah, just some light extracurricular activities on the break between that, the fellas. That ain't light. Yeah, not light, and neither, uh, what is else is not light is the forehand speed up up the oh. middle from James Ignatowicz. It's on point, and it is causing all sorts of problems. Ooh, paddle clank again, and they're a newer team, and just figuring out who takes that ball is part of solving the puzzle. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, he, he, it's, it's a full sent situation. He talks about it. I, ha I have my attacks and I, I'm trying to put it in play and deceive my opponents. And there's attacks where I'm just going to body him up and then look to clean up on the next ball. We've seen it all from him early. And Side just out. full send there again. Why not? Yeah. It's working. 11 3 1 zip. So, what answer do Monroe and Arnold have here? Pretty good one. Yeah. Yeah, and he is, uh, as we mentioned, ambidextrous, but he slightly prefers that lefty. He's For got a sure. bit more power on that wing. Yeah, it's interesting. He serves right handed. up for these two is going to be just great drama throughout the rest of this match. Yeah, and he said something else, and that was a very difficult shot that Julian Arnold hit to set himself up for the combination. But it really does seem wild to serve right-handed and, dri yeah. and drive left-handed. Yeah, because when I even teach people, it's like it's a forehand. It's a similar motion. Yeah, very similar. Let's play. Two one two. Side out. Yeah, he's Matt, been. He's, Matt Wright lets you know when it's out. <laughs> he does. And, and and Jack Monroe, he's been on several of those lefty forehands, but he's just putting them about two or three yeah. feet long each time. Got to get that two, dialed one. in. More plays. Wow. <laughs> that, for that many shots at that pace, I'm not sure we've seen that yet this weekend. My goodness. That's tremendous. One, two, two. Yeah, he had James out wide and then crashing back to the middle. So I think where he was hitting that shot was a good decision, but it was from a lower position. So uh, tough. He, he's, he's a high risk, high reward, reward player, as we talked two, about. Two, two. My goodness. Jack Monroe with the hand, the hand speed is there. I mean, youth and athleticism can get you to get to the next ball, but the next one ain't coming back. That That is very true. Two, two, two. Yeah, great job getting all the way tight to the kitchen to have all his leverage and his power with that backhand roll. It's been a great shot for him throughout this match. Second serve. Yeah. Sometimes that off-speed pitch is effective. Yeah, no, I hate to say it, but you want to make those older gentlemen bend their knees as much as possible, and Jack Monroe did that to Matt Wright right there. Just mildly offended, Adam. But I'll follow that up with, I love Matt Wright's game at this age. He has stayed at the highest level for so long, and I can't describe to you how impressive that is. I'm a shell of myself at 41. <laughs> he is 47 and 47 still, and still doing his thing. Yeah, and he's been able to stay at the top of the game as it has evolved all around him. And here he is, the three seed. Yeah, and, and the full alpha early in his career and now doing what he needs to do to win and doing it well. Oh, my. 
And now Julian Arnold finds the middle of the court. Well, it's probably the best shot for both of them. So I, I expect to see many more of those. And no one even moves on great, these. Great How well that is disguised. Second serve. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> Matt made a little face like if that went over, it was going to be big trouble. Yeah. But it didn't. Three, three, two. <laughs> a ball that hits the scoreboard behind the court was clearly called out by Matt. Yeah, James Ignata, which his hands are so heavy. The, the, the ball just flies off of that Selkirk paddle. Three, three, one. Yeah, great handle there from Jack Monroe because Ignatowicz was not far from him. Yeah, I know the score line is not in his favor, but I, I'm, I'm impressed with the youngster yep. on this big stage. He is he is playing some ball out there. That's a replay. Gentlemen, that's a replay. Hit oh, so hit the, the, ball the ball hit the bar. So, folks, just so you understand the rule, the ball... No. If it hits that solid black bar underneath, it is a replay. So you must replay it. It would have been hard to get that over, but that rule is a rule, Adam. Rule is a rule. They're there for a reason. Three, three, two. Point. And aggressive Ernie opportunity there. Michelle, what do you have for us? Well, uh, a quick chirp from courtside. Julian Arnold on that let cord that bounced off the uh, the bottom there. He said, oh, really? Like he's going to get to that ball anyways. <laughs> it continues. So making, uh, uh, making fun of Julian being vertically challenged and then making fun of the age and the foot yes. speed of Matt Wright. I, yes. I wouldn't have it any other way, Dave. No, it's, uh, it's what we thought could happen here, and it certainly has transpired. The question is, can Arnold and Monroe find the level that will force a game three. It, it just gets on you so quick. I mean, Julian's hands are, are phenomenal, but when, when James is putting that ball into his midsection, he cannot get his paddle in the proper position in time. Three, four, two. Point. I mean, it's it's a heat check. Yeah, it is a heat check, and I'm of course going to label it ambitious. But when you get some of the benefit of what he's been doing, you can't fault him too much no. there. Yeah, there's that po that drive and poach that they had so much success with last night against our former championship Sunday players, Deckel Barr and Tyson yes. McGuffin. That was their win in the round of 16 for Monroe and Arnold. So they've been very hot, pulled a great upset last night to get here. Now the question is, they finally have a lead in this match. Can they maybe just tone it down just a bit to be able to play their way to force a game number three? Second serve. Yeah, it's a good target there in the middle. And if there is possibly one small hole in James' game. It's the mid-court play in the transition zone. Wow. Yeah, he's, he, Matt's, he's thudding some third shot drives yeah. a little bit differently than it was a year or two ago. So he, he's got some pop in his paddle as well. Yeah, he uses one of the thinnest paddles on tour, 10 millimeters. And again, new partnership, a little confusion on that ball in the middle. You know what I would do? Keep throwing it there. Let them figure it out. Sure. It's been more than once or twice. Second serve. And these are the ebbs and flows <laughs> of this team. It's unbelievable. Six, four, two. And a 
wag of the finger. Not surprised from Matt Wright after that. Yeah, it's it's tough. The the fade away from a low position uh, against a good counter attacker of the pickleball. It's it's hard to pull off. And even though this is doubles, this has become personal. Four six one. So here we go. Four six. And the overhead is right-handed. And it's just wild that he has all of that in him, and it, it, it works. And obviously the big difference here in pickleball versus tennis is we don't have a rubber ball, so you cannot bounce it into the 20th row. you got to find an angle or great pace, as Jack did there. Another big serve. James holding his hand up as it must have taken a funky bounce. 5-6-2. And another serve, and we are tied up at six. Yeah, that, that miss wide doesn't really seem like a big issue no. early in the match with the reward he's, he's had from his serve. Yeah, it's in the budget, Adam, for him to just go for it. And that's well done. Yeah, it is. Uh, we talked about we both would have been flailing at that. Yes. I, I would have looked very silly on that particular shot. Julian locks in his focus and just crushes it. Six, six, one. No panic there. Nice. Oh. Okay, so fakes what he's been doing all day and fires cross court. I, I love pairing that middle shot. James was breaking hard to the middle and I think he should have been. So for Julian Arnold to change Seven, his six, spot one. was very well done. The crowd is enjoying Al calls more than they ever dreamed. Seven, six, two. Yeah! Not sure whose paddle got there first, but uh, they got it on the ground. Yeah, it's all the same on the scoreboard. Yeah, really nice job stepping over to the left. Lots of power and a little half Ernie into the kitchen as well. Good stuff from Julian. That's a great drive from Matt Wright as Monroe is flying over there to cover. You'll see Jack Monroe put a hand behind his back to give a signal. That open hand that you saw means they are going to switch sides of the court here to put the lefty, most of the time, Monroe, on the right Lefty, side. You want those two forehands in the middle. Seven, seven, two. Just ready. Yeah, waiting there with the two-hander. And I think a couple times earlier, James has pulled that to the middle. So that's a great read from Jack seven, Monroe, seven, knowing he was going to go up the line somehow. Yeah, last time he went up the line and Matt destroyed it. This time he goes to the backhand, which is also dangerous, but look at that foot speed to get back to the middle. Really well done. 8-7, Eight, Eight, Arnold and Monroe. Wow. I mean, the get that Monroe just made, running towards the kitchen with the paddle in his left hand and dug it with the right. Looking for offense with the left and then switches to the right and goes soft. Nuts. I mean, it was nuts, and then right after the nuts play, James just pulls one into the body again on that one-hander. And again, even though he's the youngest on the court, he's been playing pickleball since he was 10 years old, young Jack Monroe. 9-7-2. Yeah. 
Yeah, nice pressure from Jack Monroe, but he's a wall out there, yeah. Matt Wright, especially on that backhand side. The counter is just so clean, so crisp. Yeah, it's a couple of brick walls trying to hit it through. It's not going to usually end well, but they do get a two-point lead out of that opportunity. I mean, I think he, he needs to go for that. That, yeah. ball, uh, that ball is high enough to attack. Just have to put it in play. Eight, nine, one. Oh, and oh, it's, uh, oh. it's probably language, I would guess. So Don Stanley is our head referee who is conferring with Howard Hepworth here. And there has been some saucy chatter down on center court here. And Julian. Yeah, Julian's joining the powwow yeah. between the referees. <laughs> Here we go, we are at 8-9-1. Yeah, nice top spin from Julian. That kind of transitioning forward usually comes up with that one, not that time. Julian went for a skate again that time and then avoided the kitchen. He hadn't touched the ball yeah, in three minutes. Right. What are I you was, doing? I, I was confused, too. I was like, did he hit that? Was he <laughs> looking for momentum forward to avoid? But Because, folks, you can go in the kitchen. You don't really want to hang out there. But if you didn't hit the ball, you're fine. Yes. Too much power. Yeah, definitely so. Julian popped that up just enough for James to do his thing. Yep, took ownership of that, and there you see this constantly bouncing feet and huge swing from McNatowich. Yeah, and he, the constantly bouncing feet keep him locked in mentally, Yes, is what he says. I like that. Yeah, whatever it takes, it takes a toll on that man's body. So I know some of the tournaments are played where you play one event all day long. This progressive draw just one match in each discipline and he doesn't play single so a lot easier to be bouncing all day long with a progression draw like we have here at the Carvana Mesa Arizona Cup boy and a very empty possession there for Wright and Ignatowicz the fans want more pickleball they've seen some Unbelievable three game thrillers. They want another one. And who's ready with the counter? Jack Monroe sure is. Yeah, and he was not in a great position to counter that ball, and he somehow got a clean paddle on it. Great look at it from the kitchen sink cam. Game point for Arnold and Monroe. No way, righty save. Oh, that would have brought the house down if they survived that somehow. Uh, they get another crack at it, though. Great hands again from Mint Monroe. 10 8 2. And they get it done, so the crowd wants three. The players say yes. The official ball of the PPA Tour.
So will the high quality pickleball be the difference? Let's hope so here in game three. Please, more of that. ATP defended, and then Matt Wright gets the ball into Julian Arnold. We're off and running. If Don wasn't a referee, he would be a prince. He'd be a great principal. Oh, he'd be the best <laughs> principal ever. <laughs> he'd be a principal. That military background, I love it. Okay, we're going to have a yell after every point. That is well, he, beautiful. He, he beat James out wide and yelled at Matt. I, yeah. love, I yeah. love that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the, the target for that is not Mr. Ignatowicz. Wow. Oh my goodness, <laughs> got a layup and clanged it off the rim. They went single file. Not a recipe for success, but it works that time. Julian Arnold has had some very interesting. Oh, crazy. Uh, like, yes, avoiding the kitchen, uh, one, losing one, his one, footing one. left and right and still playing well. sitter on both sides here back to back oh man these points are high quality one, one, 19 year old just keeps bunting that ball back into play it's impressive Ooh. yeah it took a little something off somehow jack monroe early on that counter attack attempt but a nice two-hander up the line from james ignato which either way Just absolute missile. I mean, he could miss four in a row and he's still positive in that department. Yes. The serve is just huge. Two, one, one. Point. Especially when you are absolutely preferring Jack on the right side of the court. So this unwinding the stack, as we call it in pickleball, requires a great return off an amazing serve. That is asking a lot. And I was able to get on the practice court with Jack Monroe before the tournament, and he is very much less comfortable on that left side. A lot of players can interchange, do whatever they need to do either side. He is much more comfortable on the right. Oh my, so three of the four players have missed a sitter here in game three. Jack Monroe, the only one that hasn't. That was room service, just sitting there. Wow. Gorgeous cross-court attack. I'm not sure it would have been in, but we'll, we'll never know. It doesn't matter. Okay, there are no video challenges. The video's not available. Oh, he was trying to challenge the foot fault on yes. the half Ernie from yes. that right. Here we go. Five, one, two. Oh my, four sitters, two miss from Matt Wright. And that was big there because we will switch ends at six and having a five point advantage is massive. One, five, one. Oh, 
I mean, zero disguise. I'm just firing at you, sir. And, and I talked about Matt Wright's backhand counter, and even on the sitters in the last three, he has missed. So that is a, a huge deal, given the situation in the score line. And that's one of the disadvantages of going with that very aggressive dink by Jack Monroe. It sat up enough for Matt Wright to take the ball out of the air. It's just unbelievable he doesn't use that swing to serve because that just hit the top of the tape, but it is hammered. It is. So here we go. Ignatowicz with another chance to switch with a big lead. And it's the serve again. One miss, I would say seven or eight. Directly related to his serve points one for his team. So it is 6-2, Ignatowicz and Wright here in game three. And the conversation continues between Matt Wright and Julian Arnold is the question. Oh, beautiful job there. And again, a Monroe dink travels too far. Yeah, and there's a lot of benefits for, for taking those dinks so aggressively. But Matt Wright, one of the best at reaching into the kitchen using his length. And that forehand speed up is very dangerous, whether out of the air or off the bounce. Uh, some purpose on that swing, my goodness. Yeah, one of the best overheads on tour. Uh, he hits it clean. Hits it hard. <laughs> Everything you want in overhead, yes. Julian Arnold has it. Oh, and sometimes the tape gets involved and it's in your favor, so. The lead is five. What do Arnold and Monroe need to do right now? Well, more more let boards would be great. <laughs> yes, but, of uh, I, I think it's Two, just seven, finding the spot picking to attack. Decision making is so important out here. We're not having these long extended rallies. I don't think they just need to slow Three, it seven, down two. or anything, but just pick the right ball, even if you have to wait a couple. his paddle for Matt Wright. Well, Matt Wright was talking smack and then Julian uh, tapped his paddle. So that was an interesting <laughs> change of events there. That was something else right there. But what a point. My Seven goodness, the hand speed is electric out here. Oh, and Arnold just sometimes gets over amped and puts his paddle where it just can't go. But but he's got lefty backup. Yes. He's got lefty backup. It's a different situation with a right-handed player Eight, over one. there. Decisions. And lefty backup means there's a forehand just sitting there ready to clobber that. Huge serve again. Wow, and a one-handed just SWAT team. Yes, full release on that one-handed backhand. Eight, two, two. He often goes two, but that time plenty of pop on the one-hander. Uh oh, that has worked. It just, yeah, and maybe possibly that's a ball that he would roll cross court, but Matt's been doing so much damage with yeah. that shot. Uh, Nine, two, not exactly two. sure what the thought process was, but either way he makes an error. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's it, not coming back. It's just loose, it's yeah. so loose, so much leverage, so much whip. The technique is just flawless on that shot from Julian Arnold. Two, nine, so they got to go now, down seven. Yeah. Great start. Same idea. Now this is where a big serve could really put Three, them in nine, trouble because Matt Wright is not going to win a 40-yard dash on this court. Great uh, veteran play, yeah, yes. though, to put the air underneath the return. He kept it deep, lots of net clearance, gave himself time to get to his spot. Oh, uh, 
the net cord giveth and it taketh away there. So one each in the last four rallies and another chance here to get to a match point for Wright and Ignatowicz. Man, he is so good at putting pressure in the middle with the forehand and covering his backside when his opponents decide to attack. It's just not an easy combination to pull off. Here comes another BB of a serve from Ignatowicz. What a combo, and then just a filthy third shot drop, and we are at match point. Yeah, he doesn't even have to drive it every time if he's going to roll a third shot like that. And the antics continue. No problem. He's made a bunch of those today. Second chance to close it out. It took 12 in the last match. Seven on one side, five on the other. They hope to get it done right here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jack Monroe almost played a ball that was gonna land in the crowd. <laughs> he was locked and loaded, that's for sure. I mean, look at this. Great Ernie, and then what are you doing, <laughs> sir? <laughs> this is a kid that loves to make a lot of trick shot videos and put social media out there. He's like, hey, I've done this before, man. Great spot there with a little uh, lefty roll. Yeah, I mean, we saw a comeback from the exact position in the ladies' match that preceded this one. Second serve. Big backhand from Matt Wright, kind of correcting a couple of those errors when he was on the near side, now on the far side and doing damage. One, two, but not three. Great pressure from Julian Arnold. A little closer, and then Five, the ten, scoreboard two. pressure arrives. I think at first James is like, man, that had to be out, but it was not, and Matt Wright quickly said, no, that was good, so. Down to four. Six, ten, two. Oh. Wow. Out. Dug out a couple there, but could not get the last one back. So here comes match point number three for the three seed. Yeah, great view on the replay. James Ignatowicz doing his thing. He's getting a little hydration. 10-6-1. do it. Ignatowicz and Wright, they have the last word here in this match, and there was some congeniality at the end there, Adam. Maybe, maybe, maybe a little. A little. We'll, we'll go with a little. A little. A little. But with our Michelle McMahon. Dave, thanks so much. Let's begin with uh, Matt Wright, Sir uh, chirp -a -lot down here courtside. How are you able to set the chirping aside and pull this one out in three? Oh, uh, in time you play Julian. We, everyone knows it's going to be a fiery match. There's going to be some uh, words exchanged back and forth. We played athletics many, many years, many, many more years, <laughs> and uh, I'm comfortable with it. And it's just all in good fun at the end of the day. I don't think people realize how well the players usually get along off the court and it is what it is, so I don't read too much into it. It made it more entertaining, Good. let's let's Good. be honest. Uh, James, I'm gonna ask you to defend your partner here. This guy's in his mid-40s, still competing at the top of his game, but he gets chirped for his age a lot. He's still winning, he's a successful lawyer. What should people know about Matt Wright? 
I think you just said it all. I, <laughs> what, what else could I possibly say? I mean, uh, but no, I think the, the main thing is, you know, you don't see behind the scenes really with pro partnerships and, and what we say to each other. And I think that, you know, the friendship that Matt and I have sort of cultivated through this, super important, because I think the better chemistry you have with your partner, um, you know, I mean, you've got my mixed partner is Anna, my girlfriend, and my men's partner is one of my best friends in the sport. So I think it's uh, super important. Good to have a lawyer in your corner, too. Uh, Matt, why was this the right partnership for you with James? The guy's a beast. His ceiling is so high. I think he's the most powerful player out here. His energy is contagious. It's positive. I love playing with the guy. We stay positive with each other at all times. Like you said, we get along so well on and off the court. I would do anything for this guy. Uh, I think the world of him both on and off the court, I think his game is only going to get better. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds for him. Oh, that's nice, guys. Up next, you got a semifinal matchup, J-Dub and Dylan Frazier. Not an easy task ahead. What's the strategy that you can share with us here on FS1? Well, I, I practice with them all the time, so um, I know firsthand that they're really good. So <laughs> we'll see. It's going to be a tough team to beat, but uh, they're both, you know, such great kids, great hands, and I think we'll uh, probably have to be maybe a little more than we usually are, but we're still going to... Solid scouting report. They're really good. Insightful. Dave, back over to you. 